Captain's Log, Subdate 20.0702.1. The satellite of unrequited love is mine. To be honest, I've got no intention of going there. Until it's been... <clears throat> purged. But we could certainly explore the Odd Away mission, and use all their systems to resupply this pod. Or my sub, when it catches up. Welcome everyone to the exhibition of stupid people. Today, in keeping with a promise for doing more exhibitions of stupid people on individuals, and also with a promise I made to myself that I'd finally get round to doing this because I had intended on a content cut before he had his first meltdown of many, we are going to be doing an exhibition of stupid people on Andy Worski, because his story has a beginning, middle, and end, which is quite a rare treat, really, isn't it? For those who don't know who Andy Worski is, Andy Worski is a national treasure on the internet, which in real life is like saying you're the world's greatest athlete from the Federated States of Micronesia. And he has a status so vaunted and legendary. Many would struggle to ever accomplish what he has managed to achieve. Such a legend and he is, that even now with him being predominantly and basically on D-Live, yes, people still remember his name and all of what he did. Which is handy, because most of his content is gone courtesy of a rather annoying self-deletion, so we have to rely on clips from here and there, and he's been flagging people that re-upload it, or criticise him in their own videos. No irony lost on him, I'm sure, and this one will come back to bite him because Andy Worski and hypocrisy have started to become a little bit synonymous. But with all of this, I will just press X to doubt, cause swagness. Like many YouTube content creators, Wings of Redemption being the best comparison, Andy's channel has gone through a rise and fall. With the rise came a lot of criticism, and with the fall came many questions about how he managed to get as far as he did, along with the alienation of his core audience that left when he changed direction from comedy to anti-SGW response videos to live shows that themselves changed from polite discussion to race realism to irritable bowel syndrome, to a lengthy break to what he does now. Hard to believe the audience wouldn't stick around when another word associated with him is inconsistent. Many could debate the impact Andy has had on social media, along with the additional commentary on the very obvious flaws in his character that led to such a lengthy and rather amusing downfall. After, air quotes here, working so hard to get to the top of his game, so I figured that since he has now started flagging people, which is amusing because he once mocked Monday Matt for doing the same thing, I thought, well, this can be considered the straw that breaks the camel's back and encourages me to do a video on you. And originally, this was going to be a content constable, but without a channel, I can't really do that. So we do this instead. Yes. So first of all, let's run through a very brief timeline of Andy Worski's presence on YouTube. Well, I, I think I think it's uh, I think it's more that he, he just found like a really bad sect of the furries. For the sake of this timeline, I'm going to include a disclaimer. There are not going to be many clips used because I don't want to be risking getting flagged for criticizing somebody that needs to be criticized over and over again. So instead, we're going to dive straight into the timeline by first of all saying, if you want something more thorough, I would recommend Hi, I Think I'm Real. That is the name of a channel for somebody who has done a two-parter on Andy Worski. It is well thought out, and he uses plenty of clips. So how did Andy Worski start out on YouTube? Well, when he was a little boy, he received a letter telling him that he too, like Harry, was a pilchard. Okay. So when he started out, he was involved in a feature film called Dark Fist, arguably one of the greatest movies to ever exist ever, and I highly recommend you all go and watch it. As far as the internet goes, this film houses legendary status for its choreography, story, and incredible CGI. Jokes aside, when Andy started, the things that got him most attention at first were skits like parody songs of Beyonce's If I Were a Boy. In 2013, he used to host The Worski Show, which was apparently a comedy podcast. As earlier stated, Andy did produce mostly comedy skits and comedy commentary podcast content. It should be noted, Andy Worski has been around for a very, very long time, and proof of that can be traced 
to clip channels, along with dead channels that he himself used to use, and only stopped because they weren't going anywhere. Content for Andy Worski changed along with Chris Worski, who featured in a lot of the earlier skits, when they moved in the direction of social commentary. This was during 2016, and to be honest, social commentary then changed a lot. It was predominantly response videos, and that's what Andy did. Simple one-shots, either with him in front of a camera against a blank wall, or Andy and Chris Worski sitting on a couch in front of a black backdrop. I personally first heard of Andy Worski when I was invited to a Skype group by Peach Bailey. That is the limited interaction I've ever had with him. I don't think he ever used that Skype group once. To be honest, this was 2016, that is, the peak of the anti-SJW time. And response videos became his bread and butter. His brand of outrage-styled comedy, along with uploading every day, helped the channel Andy Worski blow up. It should also be noted that the major reason for uploading as much as Andy did was because then, in 2016, there was no Adpocalypse-inspired monetization review system. So creators like Andy Worski and, of course, Chris Worski <clears throat> made bank. Scattered amongst the vast quantity of response videos, Andy also did produce the odd skit, like being ecosexual and him climbing and humping a tree. But they never did as well as the response videos because the core audience of anti-SJW related content viewers were not interested in his brand of comedy. They were interested in his brand of outrage. With all the response videos Andy Worski made, all the outrage inspired skits, there was one creator, arguably amongst all the creators he responded to from BuzzFeed, TED Talk, is there anyone else? I actually can't remember any of the brand names. You know who I'm referring to though, Vice. There was one, his nemesis, and this person would actually get him the most views. That would be Francesca Ramsey, or Franny. So any video he did on her, absolutely smashed it. It should be noted now, they apparently patched things up later, but that fell apart, and we'll get to that soon enough. Andy Worski, because of the amount of content he produced, pounced on every lol cow and trend, and because of that, it really did help his channel grow. As things started to change a little, the landscape of the response video, Andy Worski started to diversify. He was one of the earliest streamer channels to start really making bank and building a show around the Super Chat facility. And one of his very first Worski Live styled streams that did incredibly well was the Andy Worski vs. Cult of Dusty stream. I can't even remember if Cult of Dusty bothered turning up, but it was amusing nonetheless that it actually set the stage for what became Worski Live. With anti-SGW content drying up, to be honest, it started in early 2017, I myself had already switched to commentary-only content, news coverage and injustice-related. And with his views going down, Andy Worski rightly adapted and started the Worski Live show, or just called Worski Live. Super Chats became a thing, and you can be sure I remember this quite well. Andy made bank. Originally, Worski Live had anti-SGWs, commentators, shitlords, edgelords, and the virgins, on to discuss content, make jokes, and sometimes debate other creators, but it was always very polite. I just want to put it out there now, I was very salty because when he had all the NTSGWs, even though I was pigeonholed as one, never went on. I was very salty. After a somewhat short period of time, Worski started to wane in viewership, as those guests he had on lacked clout to draw much of an audience along with the format of BSing for a few hours being very stale, very fast, and people moving away from anti-SGW content. So Worski, rightly again, changed the live show format to drum up viewership and them um, dono. The reason that truly motivated it was that debates and arguments equaled big views, which is hardly a surprise. Best examples would include Blair White vs. Omnipolitics, and the stream he did of everyone he had on that show bashing Rage After Storm for her race realism video, with her subsequently quitting the internet altogether. She had, by the way, been on his show before, because her channel blew up so fast. I think she was at 97, 98,000 subscribers within two months. It was insane. Understandably, though, that stream, along with her race realism video, all got significant blowback, and I'll be honest, set a bit of a stage for what fell next, which I guess was the fall of the skeptics. I can't remember if this was after or before VidCon. I think it was after VidCon, so we should probably go back to that. In 2017, 
Lots of creators in the anti-SGW community streamed their days there and went to panels, which is what led to the clip everyone saw of Anita Sarkeesian calling Sargon of Akkad a garbage human came from. At this, this VidCon, Andy Worski made up with Francesca Ramsey, which ended badly because Francesca Ramsey ended up going on a podcast and smashing his face in, with Andy making an apology to social justice warriors in a video citing that he took the jokes too far, which which then was obviously completely undone by Franny's podcast comment. Andy went on to make one last video on Francesca Ramsey, and it's arguably one of his, it was, one of his best produced videos, in my opinion on production quality, as it was a massive difference on the previous quality of single shot responses and closet size studio styles, along with Google Hangout. It is a shame I can't show you, but it was a good video while it was up. It was during this time of things changing as dramatically as they were, the apocalypse had happened, and many creators had started taking on advertisers. This was before Raid Shadow Legends, although I would have loved to have seen an Andy Worski Raid Shadow Legends ad. He was instead, by the way, promoting cryptocurrencies. Not going to bash it, we all have to do what we have to do to survive. No criticism from me on that. In the timeline of events for things that intrigued me, Kilroy is where Andy Worski changed completely. And understandably so, because those creators he respected, those he networked with to set up this event, because he was involved, based Mama might say otherwise, but he was involved. She claimed it was her idea, but most actually attribute it to him. Or Dave Cullen, I can never remember which. Possibly both. Kilroy was supposed to be a free speech event. It went on to become a poorly managed LOL event, that cost far too much through a crowdfunding event that clearly didn't deliver, and it also failed to deliver with guests and an audience to watch, with a number of those guests in fact featuring on posters that they themselves had not agreed to go to, people being made to sign non-disclosure agreements that lasted many years and non-compete clauses, because, you know, we got to protect that integrity, which was what got a lot of people's attention. Then it came out that a number of guests involved were being cancelled for their political beliefs. A friend of mine, Mim Hedrum, had suggested that perhaps when the left and right had stopped arguing, they'd go after the centre. He'd also posited the idea that perhaps when the anti-SGWs had finished dealing with the SGWs, win or lose, they would just turn in on themselves. What happened next was exactly that. Based Mama and a few people involved in her event started cancelling people for what they believed in politically, citing that maybe they should have their own free speech event, which was the exact problem with VidCon when people wanted to hear differing political views there. Get your own event. Introduce Kilroy. Ah, uh, but we don't like you either. Get your own event. I had thought that this was the straw that broke the camel's back for Andy, in the sense that he was involved with the anti-SGWs for so long, but actually it's this and one other event that took place. And it was not a good event but it did force him to walk away from those he believed and trusted, and I believe it was that bad that he was willing to work with the very people that others called shady and disgusting and would use bad tactics. Because seriously, why work with those who themselves lack any integrity? Kilroy the event became a massive joke, barely anyone turned up, and the only thing I vaguely remember from it was Monday Matt's dancing and Jeff Holliday's 360-degree camera rendering in one pixel. It was quite horrific. But I do remember the live streams on the Worski Live channel mocking this. The other thing that happened that was what forced Andy Worski to change and then start streaming with JF Gadape, if I've mispronounced your name, I do apologise, was that Kraut had done something he really shouldn't have done. Discord is very popular. I use it myself for my patrons. It's a great way to be able to stay in contact and network. Fantastic. Build your own community. What you don't want to do is build an entire community of people and then target creators with it because of their political beliefs to then produce videos that are below average, riddled with errors, and still think you're in the right when people on that server have produced and managed to locate personal information of some people. Although I know for a fact Coach Red Pill did in fact have his address on his Patreon Let's not include that one. Mr. Metzger covered the series of Kraut's server quite well. It's just a shame his channel doesn't have those videos anymore. But I do believe they're on BitChute. And they do stand as a absolutely resounding L for Kraut. And it's taken him years to rebuild that. But for Andy, 
he was so invested in the anti-SGW community, they had utterly betrayed him in the sense that they had gone against the very values he himself believed in. So what did Andy do? He worked with the very people that they were against. And what happened? Well, Andy wasn't exactly running his show for a while, uh, but he was doing very well on views and money, and I believe Hate Watch listed him as a right-wing, alt-right, white nationalist, and did a number of articles on him. Wasn't he banned from going to Israel or something? After many months of many successful streams with JF, though, that understandably fell apart, because Andy wasn't running his show. The shows were also going a bit stale, because, let's face it, the sceptics were done. For the sake of it, I was never involved, but I was called a sceptic, just never involved. At some point in between a sort of on-off moment with JF, Andy also was streaming with Tonkasaw, formerly of the Grapple Vision channel, then he started hosting the Morning Kumite. The Kumite was, along with a lot of what happened on Warski Live, the IBS era of YouTube. IBS, for those who don't know, is Internet Blood Sports, which was interesting. I will admit that it did give people a chance to just flesh out their issues, and the show was incredibly popular and profitable, earlobe rubbing profitable, for a lot of those involved. But as with all things, Kumite, Warski Live, it all falls apart, either because Andy's not in control of his own show, because Andy loses an argument, which didn't happen very often. Watching the anti-SGW squirm on the Kumite was interesting. But for the most part, it all fell apart because of the relationships of those involved. Turns out, if you leave one slimy community of slimy people who have no integrity, to then link up with people who are also slimy and have no integrity, when you yourself wish to have nothing but integrity, you're going to fall apart anyway. Then again, does Andy Worski actually have any integrity or not? That is debatable. Many months pass, and Andy Worski's show with JF is done, which leads to a mass hemorrhaging of subscribers, views, super chats, forcing Andy Worski to then rebuild. Along with the relationship with Tonka that had gone to, I do recall the MMA fight he was meant to have with Tonka, before Tonka mucked up the form, forcing Andy to take a big dub and Tonka to take a big L. Tonka then went on to just put on live streams or videos of him wrestling, where he got beaten up immensely to then somehow score a win without putting on any offensive work. Right. That was cringe. And as far as the relationship with JF goes, to be honest, that had exhausted itself because when it came to the alt-right content and race realism-related discussions, without anyone to debate it, i.e. the sceptics, because they'd been defeated, there was nothing there anymore. And he had tried doing other content as well, which meant he wasn't doing shows with JF, which annoyed JF, which I do recall led to another one of those arguments. Doesn't matter. The show died, as did the Kumite, but the Kumite died because Tonka screwed up. After all of that, though, Andy linked up with Ralph from the Killstream. He had been working with him anyway. He had been doing appearances on that show when he was doing the Kumite, Warski Live... They'd known each other for years. I've known Ralph for years. You, of course, will all have your own opinion on Ralph. I personally have no issue with Ralph. I've streamed with him. We get on well. But they'd moved on to IRL streams, something I believe that they'd gotten from Ice Poseidon, I think. These streams typically included voiced donations from Streamlabs, which would include the word knickers. You know, underwear. Um, but uh, when you're carrying a speaker... And it shouts, I like knickers, over and over again when you're walking down a street in Florida. What do you think happens next? Oh, that's right. People get really angry. Because they don't hear knickers, do they? Which led to the most iconic quote and one of Cognitive Thought's donations, I believe. Andy Worski screaming, stay back. As his friend brandishes a pew-pew thingy and failure nearly gets beaten up. Because even though he's big, he falls quite easily. With his friend, who had the pew-pew thingy, getting arrested and I believe charged with four counts. Oops. Andy did livestream all of that. Just him staring at the camera while the police officers took his friend into custody. Not so much a friend anymore. Did Andy actually help him with that? Have you noticed I haven't talked about Chris Worski anymore? Originally, I was led to believe Chris had left because he couldn't be bothered with all the uh, nonsense and the direction the show was going. Andy had claimed that Chris had stolen from him, but I never bothered to look into whether or not this was true or not. If Chris did, by all means tell me. 
Otherwise, I'm just going to think Andy's lying, because Andy does tell a lot of lies. If anyone remembers when Monday Matt was caught for flagging, and Andy mocked him for it and abused him for it. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that in a moment. Because there's more, isn't there? There's always more with Andy. That's the fantastic thing about him. I could spend far too long talking about his relationship to Sinead and Boobily. That was her name. I remember. That was messy, wasn't it, Andy? Oops. We could easily talk about your relationship to the more extracurricular variety. <laughs> Can't imagine what I'm talking about. We could talk about the fact that you had a channel with Ian Miles Chong, which was your attempt to try and get back into everything that happened into commentary, and the videos were really good. The channel made a bit of money too. But as is the case when you link up with slimy, slimy people with no integrity, they're going to shaft you at the very first opportunity. And he did, didn't he? To the tune of thousands. Which was an issue for you because you had no real income anymore because your channel was utterly dead. And you'd spent all that money on something. Can't imagine what. So after all this, what happened Andy next? Because while there's lots more to this, something did happen-ish before he disappeared and came back. He linked up with Geek Thulu. Some of you will have opinions on him. He's been accused of doxing. He's been accused of flagging and lacking any credible integrity. By all means, go nuts if you think that. I'm not going to say if he does or not, because I can't be bothered with any unnecessary argument. Although since I as well am inspired by Cthulhu, that makes two other slimy creators, apparently, who lack integrity, the other being the Poffet Cthulhu, who's now called the Neonormi Poffet. Yes, I know who you are these days. I do keep tabs on my ilk. Those shows, though, were for the most part with Geek Thulu utterly dead. Viewership had tanked. The like to dislike was quite clearly in the negatives and in the ground. So after all of that, all the drama, Andy took a break. He went for a while. It's a mystery where he went, I assume he went, <clears throat> and detoxed in Narnia, to then come back. But not on YouTube. No, no, no. There were some shows here and there, and he does make the appearance on other places. No, he now streams on DLive, which does bring a conclusion to the timeline because his YouTube channel was terminated. F? This is a long timeline, but there's one incident I want to pay attention to, and the incident involves Gino who uploaded two videos, well, three. Two were videos that aren't on his channel anymore and were straight uploads. But since they're not on his channel anymore, does he own the copyright, really? And the third wasn't a full video of his, but a clip. Fair use, apparently, is lost on Andy Worski. That's interesting for somebody who apparently had values. To then utterly shaft it for the sake of, I can't handle anything now. The amount of criticism Andy Worski took over the years of being involved in the anti-SGWs, the alt-right, the IBS community, and whatever you call the current communities he's involved in, slime perhaps, that works. Stunted slime, thank you Palpatine. There has always been arguments, drama, and lots and lots of negativity for him. Which isn't good for anyone's mental health for somebody who started out just as a comedian, to then completely change over and over again to find what they're reasonably good at now, he does retain 500 viewers live on DLive, which is great. But for somebody who had such a big channel on YouTube, to ruin it through their own poor decisions is a very interesting, very interesting timeline. Because he had good moments. But let's face it, he has undone everything over one of the longest goodbye stories I've ever seen. There are lolcals and then there's Andy Worski. He's not just a lolcal. He's Apex Logcow. Or better yet, he is Wings 2.0. His rise and fall and complete lack of grace. Fantastic. You seem pretty upset. Go back to the dilation station. Chill out a little. Go get your dial I wonder if anyone would believe me if I told them I recorded that entire timeline in one go. With minimal error. So in conclusion, after having been on YouTube for so long and having ruined all working relationships along with his channel. He is now an exclusive DLive streamer. He does have a BitChute channel. He doesn't use it. He has his Twitter. Good for him. He is essentially no more on the internets of YouTube. But his content, to an extent, does live on through clips. T-Clips has quite a bit. Cognitive Thought, I'm sure, has a whole library of it. A 
along with many people that have associated with Andy and done videos on him. For the most part, I do believe Andy will be remembered. He will also be pigeonholed as a lol cow, and also for being an easily manipulated, weak-willed simp. But I could be wrong. He could well become the biggest and greatest D-Live streamer of all time, and I would of course wish anyone their very best in their future endeavours. But since for the most part, when you think about it, Andy's story is a tad tragic, but also one hell of a lesson to learn from, it is interesting to see someone give up on their own values because they couldn't smell the trash a mile off from the very people they associated with, to continue making those poor decisions until those poor decisions left him with nothing. The anti-SGW grifters were, of course, a prime example. As a final thing, goodbye to Andy Worski, F in the premiere chat for him. I hope that while you are a joke on YouTube, you will continue to thrive on DLive. Thank you all for listening, by the way. There is not going to be a part two. If you'd like more in-depth analyses, I'm going to link some other videos I found that I thought were quite interesting. This is more me airing an opinion with a presentation style that was more focused on just briefly giving a moment to all the repeated cock-ups. I hope you'll have a cracking day, and thank you all for listening. Thank you.